Good morning, folks. We've got some eye candy, top science news, more reviews of critical elements of Earth cycles, and of course, the sun. Right now, little filaments are dominating the disk and limb regions. Large coronal hole has its solar wind set to hit Earth in about 24 hours. And on the left, you should see brightness building behind the limb as sunspots get ready to return. All is quiet now, so let's go over to Seismicity, where a 6.8 struck offshore Sendai in the same area as the 2011 Fukushima tsunami maker. It was preceded by two blood echoes in the country earlier in the day. Up next, let's go to the eye candy and it's all under the water. The first one shows how they are scanning and sounding the ocean floor and able to pull out greater detail than before. Even at a few centimeters on the surface, internal waves can span hundreds of feet of depth below. This takes second place today, however, as the internal dynamics visualizations are jumping to a new level as well. Perhaps we recall how this exaggerated view was gorgeous, but too extreme to be of actual use in studies. Not anymore. We're diving down deeper into detail as we move towards mapping the oceans like the atmosphere, nudging ahead just a little bit. These studies are of particular importance recently in light of the submarine shattered to the ocean floor in Indonesia, which they are saying was hit by a super wave under the water and slammed into the bottom of the sea. Let's go out to space for a quick cosmology note. Axions apparently lack the patience that wimps had. While the later endured decades of trying, it looks like they're going to check everything off the Axion list within a few years. This is a major one, and it won't find Axions either. Time for some review. For those who don't know climate.gov, it is a cherry-picking shell site, and since they only offer spring snow covers decline on their charts and the official winter numbers are in, let's see where those are playing out. Veteran observers know it's more of a seasonal shift because while spring snow cover is on the decline, there is an increasing trend to both the fall snow extent and the winter snow extent, and with this year's latest numbers, that continues. You cannot learn this on the official government climate site, and that's a shame. Last bit of eye candy up here is Hubble peeking in on the Necklace Nebula. We see the red blotches at the tips of the outbursting jets that made the ring, which is a Nova-like expulsion that once more leaves a star inside so that it can go boom again someday. Of course, the Great Solar Blast is what we're waiting for in the crescendo of the ongoing event. Yesterday we went over a bit about the cycles and how the magnetic excursions and related biosphere stresses match up with the cycle on a global look even when one individual study might see some cycle or even half cycles more than others. Well, let's do the same thing today with the Heinrich ice events. To immediately elucidate that point, new study on the sediment reveals the half magnetic cycle H3 Heinrich event showing up the most. In others, we see just the last two events, Gothenburg and Lake Mungo showing up the best, which match up to the Younger Dryas disaster and the last glacial maximum. And it also shows how the world never behaves in unison during these events, even going back 60,000 years. Some places get luckier than others, which helps to disguise some events in these studies. Regardless, they always manage to get some signature of the major events, even if it's difficult to recognize in full. This was the case with both the Younger Dryas, you see YD top bar on the left, which gets the designation H0 now as it was discovered later and they couldn't exactly go lower than H1 in any other way. And at the letter C, not only is it the cycle timing, but the chart actually looks like they should have identified plunge activity in that gap as well, H4. But for now, we'll just have to call it Heinrich event 3A since H4 is already taken. Folks, the sun, the magnetic cycle, the ice events and extinctions and volcanoes and all the evidence from the past and present that suggests we're on our way into another catastrophe now. All in our book, available at otf.cells.com. Also today at otf.cells.com, folks, our Observer Ranch Founder sweatshirts are in. Limited supply and they are now part of the Sunspot Founder class. The founding donation not only gets you permanent recognition at the ranch, this Founders sweatshirt, but also access to the opening week of Observer Ranch expected in spring 2022. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.